Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Metal Gear Solid 1. Last time, uh, what did we do last time? Uh, that's right, we fought the Hind, and we fought Sniper Wolf. Yeah. Essentially, we, let's see, we did, we did the whole, we ran up the communications tower, Liquid caught up to us in his Hind, we fought him off, we come down here, we come down here, get shot by Sniper Wolf, and then we fight her off. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this time we're gonna go a bit further into the game. Um, I don't think this will be the last episode per se, but I do think this will be one of the last. Like it's either this episode or the next episode that's like the last normal one before the finale. So yeah, something. <laughs> anyways. Let me turn on my TV and keep going. All right, need shaft range to get through here. There we are. I don't know, I can't resist really trying to find what this is. So bolts. And, well that one was close. <laughs> um, okay, let's head down here to find oh no we lost <laughs> no <laughs> see I guess I, have to, I, guess I, I mean I don't think I have to, really have to explain this but I will anyways um, in the before time before games were put onto blu-ray discs and digital downloads there was, was games were put on CDs which unfortunately could not hold what the, see if I can Whatever. It'll phase out. But yeah, the games were put on CDs. Unfortunately, um, the CDs, or floppy disk, I think, couldn't hold so much data. As such, games had to be put, had to be split up between multiple disks, all included within the same packaging. So for example, this game had two disks. Disk 1 and Disk 2. Same goes for a couple other really long games, such as well, not long, but like, same with some other games with a lot of stuff in it, like Final Fantasy VII, Wild Arms, that sort of thing. Now, although, on a PS3, it's not exactly hard. You just switch this, switch to this too, yes, and just press start. See, it's checking. But yeah, you would have actually had to open up your PlayStation, take out the first disc, and put in the second one. Crazy, I know, but yeah. Good lord, what's going on? Uh, hmm. Um, whatever, I guess I'll just check that later. Probably nothing, anyways. Just a fax machine. Oh crap. Hi, behind here, huh? Um, I don't think I really think I... Why? Why, 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 Oh, yeah. Anyways, um, we can easily come back up here and basically go through the rest, go through the rest of the game. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily, uh, you know what I mean? Anyways, to get past this area, all you have to do is just stick right here and be careful of this partition line thing in the middle. Let it go over your head before you keep going because if you touch it, you're gonna like fall and if you fall here, you're going to lava instant game over. I'm gonna use some stun grenades for once. Honestly, the last time I used these I think the lava burned up my grenade. Anyways. He is stunned. Yeah, I know. But they wake up quickly. Just get in here. Enemies won't normally follow you. Ouch. Enemies won't follow you in here usually. Um, and behind here is just some ammo and whatnot in the event that you need. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's leave and 
get to the rest of the game. Um, well, this might be, I mean, this might be the last one. I'm not exactly sure. Because, I mean, after this is that, and, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, there's a couple more stuff, but, um, hmm, I guess that's true. Well, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm just thinking about what's coming next, and, yeah, everything. same thing uh, we dealt with before just put on your body armor or um, infinite ammo bandana and yeah let's take them down actually I wonder what happens if you use the stun grenade do they just like get knocked out and, and die from that, or well, I mean, I'm pretty sure they don't knock out because you do have to kill them. Where's my rations? There we go. Then take him down. Uh, yeah, there we go. This is the only time this that that happens so it's not you know it's not anything to worry about anyways when we reach down here yeah your stuff gets jammed unfortunately but be careful there's a camera there yeah jerk move on the developers part seriously like it, it, it's, I guess it's guess it meant to catch you unawares. Oh yeah, you want to hear another jerk move? They put mines everywhere here, knowing you can't use the metal detector or nothing to pick it up. So you wouldn't even know these are here. You'd go get the item and then, bam, that's it, you get exploded. And they're even hidden under, so it's not like you'll see them. Uh, fortunately, we'll actually be needing these claymores, so... Yeah, not much. Well, I mean, I guess you could say it's the developers helping us, but. Meh. That being said. Let's pick this bad boy and head down. Crows everywhere. You do get a small little dialogue change if you, in the in just the moment, if you call the master up. There are a lot of crows around here. Those aren't crows. Those are northern ravens. The Inuit and other Native Americans worship northern ravens as creator deities. Some say that ravens have the power to predict death. The great poet Marlowe wrote about them. 16th century thus like the sad presaging raven that tolls the sick man's passport in her hollow beak and in the shadow of the silent night doth shake contagion of her sable wings that's pretty gloomy master by the way what i've got something to tell you about naomi hunter what about her is this conversation secure don't worry the monitor's off Okay. What's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the Mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. What did you say? It was really bothering me. Why would she lie about it? She lied? 
she might be a spy. Ridiculous. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. The head of the FBI at that time, Edgar Hoover, he was a well-known racist. Didn't Naomi say that her father was Japanese? Yeah. Well, back then, there wasn't a single Asian investigator. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started yet. They first started in 1960, in Chicago, not New York. But you better check it out. The chief and the president mysteriously dying, and that ninja? Too many strange things are happening. Are you saying that Naomi might be behind it? I don't know. Either that, or she's working with the terrorists. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime, be careful. Okay. Still, though, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. But if Naomi's a spy, who is she spying for? I mean, it's not like the... What's it called? Foxhound knows our every move. So she couldn't have been telling it to them, but... Eh, whatever. Let's head down here. In this cold chamber. Uh, be careful, though, because... If you stay in here too long, your rations will freeze, meaning you cannot use them. Yeah, something... Well, I'm not gonna say the game doesn't tell you it, but, like... The game lets you know if you call Miller or something like that. But, yeah, be sure not to stay in here for too long. Uh, that being said, let's just head in here. Too. You know of the World Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know it. Must be a real threat in the muck duck eating contest. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the Ear Pull. It is an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. It tests spiritual as well as physical strength. You want to pull each other's ears? form is different, but the spirit is the same. Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious. It's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Well, we'll see if there is iron in your words. Okay, the battle with Vulcan Raven. It's uh, simple, yet a bit difficult. See, he's gonna walk around uh, the area. And if he spots you, he's gonna shoot you. And he can hit you from all the way across the map, so make sure he doesn't see you. 
Well, ah, crud. Instead, what we can do to attack him is use our Stinger Missiles. Or the Nikita, but... I mean, oh, I mean, you could use the Stinger. Well, you could use the Nikita, but... Personally, I always just end up using the Stinger because the Nikita, like, you know, you're, whole, you're held in place. And it's not like I can even see him. Like, the map is still the same, you know what I mean? Like, at least with Stinger Missiles, I can actually see where he is or something, even if I can't move to attack him. See? I can just do that and then run. Right, let me see what uh, Campbell has to say. Yeah, so I guess they're trying to get you to use the... Oh god, my volume is way too high. <laughs> but yeah, they're trying to get you to use the Nikita missiles. Or the Stingers, to be honest. I personally just use the Stingers every time. Doesn't really change all that much. Be right there. Fire. Boom. Is he going this way? Because he does change his pattern a few times. Yes, yeah, he's quite. His patterns. I don't want to get caught by him. Come on now. But yeah, as you can see, his patterns do change a few times. He's gonna go down. He's this way. Good, 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 good. Too bad. See if I can't get behind him. Get him from the back. Yes, yeah, he, he, he can't hit you for a good hour. You know what, my way said he made like mince me out of you, seriously. <laughs> and he just turns around like I didn't just hit him from the back. Anyways, it's at this point, he is not at that phase yet. Okay. Another rocket will do it. Will it? Please? Please tell me. He's... Oh crud, is he in that phase? I don't know. Okay, he's still in this... Okay, he should be in the... Yeah, he's in the phase where he's going across like each lane and shooting. Go, see if I can, is he gonna? Oh crap, he's in the last phase, isn't he? He is, isn't he? Ah, and my rations are frozen. Oh, okay, there we go. He has one more phase where he just runs around the area a lot. Just lay some mines down and you'll be able to beat him. Just as the boss said, it is my existence. 
which is no longer needed in this world. But my body will not remain in this place. My spirit and my flesh will become one with the ravens. In that way, I will return to Mother Earth who bore me. Snake! I will be watching you! Understand? Snake, take this security card. It will open that door. Why? You are a snake which was not created by nature. You and the boss. You are from another world. A world that I do not wish to know. Go and do battle with him. I will be watching from above. First, I'll give you a hint. The man who you saw die before your eyes. Master of disguise. He copied his subjects down to the blood. So he drained the chief's blood and took it into himself. But he wasn't able to deceive the Angel of Death. The Angel of Death? so much trouble. Why impersonate the chief? <laughs> that is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest of the riddle yourself. Snake, in the natural world, there is no such thing as boundless slaughter. There is always an end to it. But you are different. What are you trying to say? of your enemies. Their souls will haunt you forever. You shall have no peace. Hear me, Snake. My spirit will be watching you. All right. I guess let's continue then. We're like 20 something minutes in now. Snake, it's me, Master. It's about Naomi. Turn your monitor off. What about Naomi? <sighs> Colonel, is Naomi there? No, she's away. She's taking a short nap. Hmm. So what is this about Naomi? Okay, maybe we better let the Colonel hear this too. Yeah, go on, Master. Well, basically, Dr. Naomi Hunter is not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. The real Naomi Hunter disappeared somewhere in the Middle East. Our Naomi must have somehow obtained her identification papers. So then, who is she really? She must be some kind of... spy. A spy? Yes. Maybe she's been sent to sabotage this operation. Are you saying she's with the terrorists? I don't want to believe it either. But she is working for Foxhound. So you think she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Different group? It couldn't be... Place her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. She needs to be arrested and interrogated to find out who she's with. If she's one of their spies, then we're in big trouble. What do you mean? Uh, nothing. 
Have you let her in on some kind of vital secret or something? Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the arms tech president? I... I have no idea. Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. Wait, wait a minute. Without her, we can't complete this mission. I knew it. You're hiding something. Give me some time. I'll try to get it out of her. Hurry, then. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. All right, guess let's move. Yeah, see, rats are frozen, so it's like I can't even use them. Whatever, we have a level seven card. Um, we could go back and get um, the level seven door up back in the beginning, but I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna, we're gonna be going back there anyway, so. Well, I mean, all that's in that door, to be honest, is um, stinger missiles. So, I mean, it's not like we're missing much. Let's, let me see something. Oh, that's where, okay, never mind then. Um, yes, though. Where are, wait, why am I looking for a shaft grenade in the item section? There we are. Careful of the two of the double trap doors. And yeah, the entire area is just filled with gun cameras, so be careful. Let's head on through. Up here is what again? A couple of stinger missiles, okay. Ah, and more gun cameras, of course. Because they couldn't just be kind to you and be like, hey, you good job for making it up here. No, they had to give more stinger missiles. They, they just gave us more stinger missiles and say, hey, let's put some gun in place, gun camera in placements there. Uh, whatever though. Guess we'll have to keep going. Yeah. Straight on to Metal Gear. Well, here it is. Let's keep on going forward. Snake, it's me. What's wrong? Did you find a good place to hide? Yeah, thanks to the stealth gear. It looks like they've finished getting Metal Gear ready. How do you know that? I overheard them talking. Where are you now? Right in front of Metal Gear, but it's strange. What is? There's nobody here. No guards, nobody patrolling. It's too quiet. Maybe because they're all ready. They said they even input the PAL codes. What should I do? All we can do is use the override system that President Baker told you about. But I've only got one of the three keys. And besides that, like Ocelot said, there's some trick to using the keys. Leave it to me. You got some kind of plan? Well. I'm in the computer room right now. I'm trying to access Baker's private files. Baker's files? Don't you need a password? Of course, but there are ways. Are you a hacker? Yep, that describes me pretty well. Does it look like you can get in? I don't know yet. I'll give it a try. I'm counting on you. All right, let's keep going up. Up here is oh, another call. What? Snake, it's me again. How's it going? Uh, not bad. I just got past his third security level. He was a pretty careful guy. Do you think you'll break in soon? I never met a system I couldn't bust into. Okay, keep trying. Huh? I mean, we just came up here, like. Uh, whatever though, we are here, yes. Get up here, Autocon's probably gonna call us again. 
snake. I did it. You got past security? Bingo. Great. So what do you got? I accessed the confidential Metal Gear file. So what about the PAL override system that Baker talked about? I haven't found it yet. That's what I need to know. But Snake, I found something else. What? The secret behind the new nuclear weapon. Just as I thought, the nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the railgun like a projectile. It doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. Pretty sneaky. Yes, but effective. And that's not even the scariest thing about this weapon. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. It's a stealth weapon. You mean it won't show up on radar? Yeah. The truth is, they've been working on a stealth missile since the late 70s. Why weren't they able to develop one until now? Because of the missile rocket propulsion system, it would be picked up by enemy satellites. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But unlike a missile, the railgun doesn't burn any propellant, so it can't be detected by any current ballistic missile detection systems. An invisible nuclear warhead. Totally impossible to intercept. And on top of that, it's got a surface-piercing warhead designed to penetrate hardened underground bases. Yeah, we learned that lesson in the Gulf War. This thing could mean the end of the world. It's the ultimate weapon. And from a political point of view, it avoids the problem of nuclear reduction and nuclear inspections. Colonel, is this true? Are you listening? I'm listening. If word of this got out, it could delay the signing of the START III treaty and cause a huge international incident. Yeah, it would be nasty. The United States would be denounced by the UN. It could even bring the president down. Did you know this, Colonel? I'm sorry. You've changed, Colonel. I won't make any excuses. Snake, listen to me. This new nuclear weapon, it's never actually been tested, only simulated. You mean they ran a computer model? Yeah, that's why they were conducting this exercise. They needed to get actual experimental data to back up the simulation. What were the results of the exercise? It looks like it went better than they hoped for, but I can't find the data anywhere on this network. You'd think that data as important as that would be carefully recorded. It was. President Baker gave me an optical disk with all of the test data. What? Do you still have it? No. Ocelot took it from me. Damn. The terrorists have replaced the dummy warhead with a real warhead. Once they input the detonation codes, they should be ready to launch. So you think they can do it? Well, the dummy warhead was designed to be identical to the real thing, so I think so. Did you find out how to override it yet? Not yet. It must be in a separate file. Right now I'm looking through all of Baker's personal files. We're counting on you. All right, let's uh, keep going. Seriously, we're only like, we're only like 30 minutes? I mean, this is gonna be like a really short episode, huh? But yeah, there is a guy over there, so I'm just gonna hit my P, uh, SG one before he calls in more people. Let's wait for him to walk back. I'm gonna all the way. <clears throat> oh god, what was in my throat? Yeah, I knew it. He's all the way over there. Whatever, he should appear here soon. Just wait. There he is. One shot, one kill. Let's keep moving. Need. 
head up here into an entirely separate area because they couldn't put I guess they couldn't make it just the same. That's just weird. Okay, I've entered the PAL codes and disengaged the safety device. We can launch any time. There's still no response from Washington. It looks like we'll have to show them that we mean business. Should I set it for Chernotin, Russia? No, there's been a change. The new target is Lotnor, China. Why, boss? I'm sure neither you nor Mr. Golukovich would really like to see a nuclear bomb dropped on your motherland, right? Liquid. But why? There's nothing there. Wrong. It's a nuclear test site. A nuclear test site? If we nuke a major population center, the game's over. But a nuclear explosion at a test site can still be concealed from the public. Meanwhile, Washington will be worried about the retaliatory strike from China. That'll probably mean top-secret talks between both countries' leaders. Of course. And in the process, the President will be forced to divulge the existence of a new and highly destabilizing nuclear weapon to the Chinese. What do you think that will do to the U.S.'s reputation? Or the President's? And with the CTBT, that means that China and India... I see. Yes. When the other countries hear about this new weapon, they'll all want to contact us. Washington won't be very happy when we start selling their own system to the highest bidders. Yes, the president will break. He will give in to our demands. Big Boss's DNA and one billion dollars. Billion dollars? That money will be used to cure our genome soldiers as well. I'm also including the Fox Dye vaccine in our demands. Fox Dye? It killed Octopus and the arms tech president. So it's true that it affects older people first. Mantis might not have been affected because he wore a mask. Wolf wasn't infected either. Perhaps due to those tranquilizers she always took. Something to do with the adrenaline level in the blood. Or maybe it's just because this fox dye was still experimental and they haven't worked out all the bugs yet. In any case, have you heard from your friend, Colonel Sergei Golukovich, at the Spetsnaz? He still has doubts about the ability of Metal Gear. He said we can talk after Metal Gear's test launch is successful. Hmm, he's a very prudent man. There's nothing to worry about. The Colonel wants Metal Gear and a new nuclear weapon so bad he can taste it. If Russia wants to regain its position as a military superpower, they need to reinforce their nuclear arsenal. They need a nuclear weapon that can't be intercepted. Metal Gear will allow them to gain first strike capability over the rest of the world. Their regular army is in shambles, and they think they can restore their country's military power with nuclear weapons? Golukovich, he's no warrior. He's a politician. But he's the one who gave us the Hind and most of our other heavy firepower. He's got over a thousand soldiers under his command. If we join forces, we could put up quite a resistance here. Since Mantis died, the genome soldier's brainwashing has started to wear off. I'm worried about the men's morale. An alliance with the Russians would boost that as well. What do you say? We're not going anywhere. We're going to dig in here. We could still escape. We've got the most powerful weapon ever made, and we're about to ally with Golukovich's forces. Are you going to fight the whole world? <laughs> What's wrong with that? We can launch a nuclear warhead at any target on this planet. A nuclear warhead invisible to radar. And on top of that, this base is full of spare nuclear warheads. Once we get the DNA and the money, the world will be ours. What about your promise to Colonel Golukovich? I have no interest in the revival of Mother Russia. You're not thinking of reviving Big Boss's dream. For today, call this place Outer Heaven. Big Boss's dream. But Boss, you're not worried about the PAL being overridden. When the code is in it again, it'll be deactivated. No need to worry. The DARPA chief and the arms tech president are both dead. Does Snake know how the override system works? You interrogated him, don't you know? He didn't have any keys on him. Good. Then no one can stop Metal Gear now. By the way, what should we do with that woman? Want me to kill her? Let her live. 
She's Campbell's niece, and Snake cares for her. We'll keep her as our ace in the hole. Meryl, she's alive. Snake, I found Baker's top secret files. Great job. How's it going there? They've finished inputting the PAL codes. So how do we deactivate them? Okay, you see the override system that the president was talking about. It can also be used to input the detonation codes. You see, if you insert the keys when the warhead is active, you deactivate it. And if you insert them when it's inactive, it becomes activated. And you can only use the keys once. Only once, huh? Yeah, you better get started. We don't have much time. But it takes three keys, right? I've only got one of them. Hold on a minute. You see, that's the trick. You already have all three keys. What are you talking about? The card key is made of a shape memory alloy. Shape memory alloy? Yes. It's a material that changes shape at different temperatures. The key is made out of it. This card key? Yeah. The card key changes shape at different temperatures. So this key is actually three keys in one. Clever. Can you see the input terminals in the center of the control room? I see them. Those three laptop terminals are for the emergency input. There should be a symbol on each screen. Each symbol corresponds to a different key. Input the keys in order from left to right. The left one's for the room temperature key. See the symbol? Next to that goes the low temperature key. The one on the right is the high temperature key. Okay, I got it. First, I change the shape of the card, and then I input them in order, right? That's right. All you do is insert the card keys. After you insert the key into the module, a hard disk reads the information contained on it. Once you've finished with all three terminals, the code input process is complete. But here's the thing. You can only use the key three times. It's an emergency system. It's only meant to be used once. The world is riding on that key, Snake. Who's that? Damn! King fell in the drainage ditch. Snake! This is bulletproof glass. There's no way in. I'll enjoy watching you die. <laughs> All right, let's move. Take this. Here. You can get up, back up, keep chasing us, which is fine. Uh, to lose the alert, just keep running. You don't have to fight them off. Just, yeah, just keep running, to be honest. Not crazy, he's like, fully, he's like right behind me. Climb up here. Oh, where is he? <laughs> Yeah, they don't have enough sense to just actually climb up here. Is there a guard there? No. Good. Um. But yeah, let's keep going. I guess. Um, it fell in the drain. The Palki fell in the drainage ditch, so we gotta go all the way to the bottom. That means down here as well. As well. Um, let's see. We're like 40 something minutes in. I guess we'll keep going until that point, even if we're over an hour. I guess that's fine. Because the finale is probably going to be like an hour or two, to be fair. Um, anyways, next thing you want to do is. If you have it. But she probably should use the metal detector. Because it'll show where the PAL key comes up. Uh, with that being said, let's head down here. Uh, oh no. Don't tell me. <sighs> Crud. 
Must have gotten swallowed by a rat then, because the rat's moving. Yeah, this can happen sometimes. All I need to do is go to the um, vent grate here and place a claymore right in front of it. I believe there are a few more. Anyways, the water's poisonous, so... Yeah, be careful walking into it. And the ocelot also put a bunch of bombs here. So again, be careful. Snake, did you find the key? No, it's not here. Don't be ridiculous. You saw it fall into the drainage ditch, didn't you? The drainage ditch. Isn't there something odd about it? No. There are a lot of big rats, though. That's it, Snake. A rat must have eaten it. Now it was being ridiculous. No, I'm right. There's no other possibility. Rats eat all sorts of things. There's nothing unusual about that. Yeah, just confirming it. Just in case you couldn't figure it. Ooh. The claymore blew up. I know eventually we get it. Oh, it's over here. Put it right in front of here. I've got to cut it above them. There we are. A rat must have eaten it, so... Yeah, the rat in question is now walking down. It's gonna reach the bomb. It's gonna turn? No. It's going this way. Turning back. No. Oh, uh, uh. Good lord. Put a claymore here, just in case. There, so now we have two possible entryways where the rat will go. Head down here, if we follow it. Should head down. What? What, did it just hack it up? Uh, whatever. Palky's ours. Let's get up. What was that though? Did, did it just like cough it up or like poop it out or something? I could have sworn we had to like drop a bomb there and then the mouse walk into it, explode, and we get the palky. But no, I guess not, huh? That being said, let's head up here with the Palky in hand. 48 minutes, yeah. This video is probably going to be over an hour just because of the next stuff that happens. Probably one of the most, like, annoying parts of this game. Like, it's... Personally, I think it's about as annoying as uh, when we had to go back for um, a PSG to fight against Sniper Wolf, but... Meh. Five stun grenades, okay. Guess I'm gonna make good use of them now, huh? Don't feel like wasting time using the PS um, G thing to. I think he got knocked out. Yeah, just throw one in. It'll be knocked out for a short while. Long enough for you to get to where you need to go and go. Um, yeah, you also need shaft grenades. Not shaft grenades, oh, shaft grenades. Because there are cameras in here, and if you get caught, you they'll shoot gas and you'll die. Anyway, just get the PAL key and walk over here. You'll automatically input the first code. Pal and one of that goes down.
Okay, for the second PAL code, we need to do exactly as he says. Freeze the key. In other words, take it somewhere cold. And fortunately, there are a good few places that are cold enough. Um, you could take it back out to the snowfield, or you can just take it to the place where we fought Raven. And I'm gonna wear stealth camouflage, because this is, this is pretty much the last time we're gonna use it in the game. And, I mean, to be honest, I just want this to be as fast as possible, because this part is annoying. Yeah, so we're gonna have to go freeze the key, and then after we freeze the key, we have to um, come back up and, what's it called, heat up the key. Fortunately, this was downsized again in the Twin Snakes, where instead of us having to go all the way back through everything, all we have to do is just um, shoot some um, temperature pipes around the pla around um, this area. I think we have to come like over, over there or like up there where the pipes, and you just had to shoot them to. Um, well, it, it would hurt you, but it would also um, heat up or freeze your pal key. Yeah, but with that being said, though, it's like it's the same thing I was saying earlier, and I think episode one like why would why would you have a system set where um what like you, it takes three keys to override um a detonation like shouldn't shouldn't you have three keys to you know make the detonation happen and then um you know one key to stop it or better yet don't even have a key to stop it just have you know, uh, an emergency stop button. Because at least then it's like, you know, if you made a mistake or, you know, something like that, you're not, you know, instantly nuking some other country or some, you know, by accident. Uh, anyways, yeah. So what we're supposed to do here is stay here for a short while till the pal key turns blue. Now, however long we're supposed to stay here, I think it's like, it's like a minute or two, even, well, not even a minute or two, like, mostly just, uh, like, not even 30 seconds, but, yeah. And as you can see, the crows have eaten Vulture's body, Vulture, whoa, no, have eaten Raven's body completely. Is the Palkey doing, okay, no. Um, I guess I can take this time to kind of discuss what I think about this game. Honestly, it's... It's pretty fun, you know, it's just, like, it's, it's not a bad game, it's just the other Metal Gear Solid games are much better than this. They improve on the concepts, uh, seen in this game. You know, but that doesn't mean this game is bad by any standards. No, it's actually really fun. And it's pretty short, too. Like, this is, what, episode six? Meaning, um, like, the entire, mind, this entire series would be, like, episode, like, seven episodes long. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, it's like, I don't know, a lot of the, a lot of the hype for this game is still kind of here for me, you know, it's just, it's really good. Of course, the other MGS games are better, but, yeah, overall, I rate this game, like, um, oh, well, let's see. Ah, yeah, it's cold now. See, it's blue, so let's head back. But overall, I I rate this game. Well, uh, um, compared to the rest of the series, I'd say this game is like a number five out of six. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means that it's not as good as the other games. Um, and I think the reason for that's just you know, the fact that it doesn't have, sorry, it doesn't have all the other features that the other MGS games have in it. You know, it just has the bare bones stuff. Also, I think it's a, well, I mean, I, I think it's a bit of a waste to have, um, what's called two discs when you know, one of them's literally just like the last, like it's literally just like another boss fight, a short backtracking section, and the ending of the game. Like, 
they couldn't do it all in one like disc. Like the way Final Fantasy does it, um, well, at least to my understanding, Final Fantasy VII does it is like, um, they have multiple discs, yeah, but they got like whole stories on a disc. Uh, whatever though, let's keep on going. In here, and then down here we go. Oh, we don't even need to use the stun grenade because we have stealth camo. Huh? I can just flip him if I so choose. Whoop. And yeah, let's use another. I mean, do we even need another shaft grenade at this point? Oh, we have to just go invisible. <laughs> the cameras can't see us, so it's not like. You know what I mean? Let's equip the PAL key again. Okay, last PAL code, warm up the key. Um, you can get this just by going all the way back to the boiler room area we came, we went to at the beginning of um, this episode, where we had to like walk across the walkway over where the, all the lava was. That's where we had to go. Uh, where was it? Here we are. But yeah, this is literally like the last uh, segment, huh? Not much else is... Yeah, but yeah, I mean, this this is pretty much the last part of the game. Like, after you get the... I'm, to be honest, I'm probably just going to warm up the key and then run all the way back to almost the that door where we, just before we put it in. That way, you know, because after you put in the warm key, it's... What's it called? You, you, we go straight into the boss fight. That's like this is the point of no return. <laughs> After this is the final boss, and that's it. So I'm just gonna save that for next time. We're gonna go and warm the key because I believe there's an extra set of dialogue. If not, oh well. But yeah. What's over here, right? I do like the fact though that Kojima decided to put so many little details into this game. Like, the first person thing with Psychomantis, or, actually no, screw, forget that, what about the entire Psychomantis, um, like, what's called psychic part of it beforehand, like, oh god, I gotta heal up these rations, um, but yeah, like, all that stuff beforehand, you know, it's like, um, before Psychomantis, before the fight, Psychomantis proved he was a psychic, not only by vibrating our controller, but, um, he also, like, read our, read how we played, read our save file, and, you know, to see what games we played and whatnot. If you played something like Suikoden, or Police Knots, or, you know, in later incarnation, in later versions of the game, you know, like Smash Bros, or something like that, you would have, he would have said it. Which is really interesting to me. Plus, the whole part right here about, you know, the mouse. Uh, yeah, this, this whole part right here about the... Oh, click this. There we go. Yeah, about like the mouse to eating the pal eating the pal key and everything. That like on my first playthrough, that didn't happen. Like this is probably the second time I've actually seen that happen in all like what six of my playthroughs. So must have been like what the, every three on your third playthrough, some weird stuff happens. But yeah, this game is fun. And for the other MGS games we'll be playing in the future. Um, there's still a lot of detail, like, in MGS2, there's stuff like, you know, ice, uh, ice cubes freezing in real time, or in MGS3, your eyes adjusting to darkness and everything. Snake, it's about Naomi Hunter, and you should talk to the Colonel, he's looking into it. Turn your monitor off. Okay, it's off. No one else can hear us, go ahead. Sorry, but I didn't want the Colonel to hear. Okay, so what's up? I've got a good friend in the Pentagon. Yeah? 
He's the one who told me about it. It looks like the DIA recently developed a new type of assassination weapon. An assassination weapon? Snake, have you ever heard of something called Fox Dye? No. Fox Dye. Liquid and the others were talking about it. Yeah. It's some kind of virus that, that targets specific people. I don't know all the details, but... What are you trying to say? It's too similar. What is? The cause of death. Didn't the arms tech president and the DARPA chief, I mean, decoy octopus, die of something that looked like a heart attack? Yeah. Well, apparently, Fox Die kills its victims by simulating a heart attack. No. You're telling me that Naomi was behind it? Snake, try to remember. Did Naomi give you some kind of injection? The nanomachines. She was in the best position to have done it, but I don't know what her motive was. Does the Colonel know? I'm not sure. But he still hasn't questioned her. Okay, I'll ask him myself. Colonel, what's new with the Naomi situation? I just placed Naomi under arrest. Arrest? She was sending coded messages towards the Alaskan base. I didn't want to believe it, but she must be working with the terrorists. Are you sure? I'm afraid so. She's being interrogated now. What kind of interrogation? Well, I'd like to avoid the rough stuff, but we don't even have any sodium pentothal here. Call me if you find out anything. So it's true, isn't it? Naomi, I can't believe it. That means the Fox Dye vaccine must be around somewhere. Listen, I've got bigger things to worry about. But Snake, you might be infected too, you know. All I can do is leave it up to the Colonel. Hmm. Then what, Fox Dye kills everyone that is infected with it? Well, if that's the case, and people always die with heart attacks, yeah, we'd, we'd probably be infected. <laughs> Whatever. We're like right in front of the boiler room. Let's go. <sighs> right. The mines. How did I forget? And I can't even heal because my rations are frozen. Like, no, really, who thought of this? Like, you know, I, it's a nice thought to, you know, have the player's rations be frozen, um, you know, after they go into a cold area, but it's like, but yeah, but it's like, you know, really? You're telling me I, like, I can't even heal because my rations are so frozen. It melts it before you eat. How do I melt them? Matter of fact, let me just look this up because I can't be bothered for this. MGS MGS1 How to melt rations Let's see how to defrost Uh, okay, apparently the only, one of the few ways to defrost your rations is to either get into the blast furnace here or hold it, in, or equip it, because I guess you're like holding it in your hand, so, you know, it, like, it, it, it would eventually warm up. Anyways, let's head in here, because I think there are enemies about. Oh yeah, my rations are just fine. It, it melts real quick when you, get, when you get inside here. Anyways, Palky's back to normal. Uh, gotta wait just a little bit more, and should be getting red sometime soon. Yeah, there are enemies out there, so I don't want to go out there and get caught and then just have to go through this whole fiasco and everything again. Just wait one more moment or two. they chose to frozen like yeah it's a nice detail but you know they put a lot of stuff that can damage you right after it so 
you know, how am I going to heal? And this, this could also happen during the snowfield, during the sniper boss fight. So, what am I there, What exactly are you supposed to do? Whatever, um, Palky's red now, so let's head back. Also, get it, red, yellow, blue, at the Palkis, <laughs> get it, the primary colors, the colors literally everyone picks when it comes to sets of three, like, I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just, a, like, a spur of the moment thing, but I, I always notice that, like, whenever, like, colors are something, it's always red, blue, and yellow, like, Pokemon had Pokemon, like, red, blue, yellow, yeah, it had green, but no one really played green, I don't think. Um, you know, it's like, actually, no, Pokemon does have a lot of similarities with red and blue, doesn't it? Like, literally every incarnation, except for black and white, has red or blue in some version. Like, there's the ruby and sapphire and the omega and alpha versions of that, diamond and pearl, well, I mean, diamond was blue, so I guess we can stop that. I mean, heart gold and soul silver. Um, well, I guess yeah, heart gold and soul silver were kind of like that because the heart gold—it was more like orange versus a uh, light. Oh, I think it was like a dark blue. But yeah, you still got the red and blue thing going on. The only difference was I think in diamond and pearl and in black and white, where the black and white and everything. Which is odd, to say the least. Well, I don't know, it's just something I've noticed. But yeah, whenever, you know, a color choice comes up in these games, it's always, in games, it's always like red, yellow, and blue. Seriously. I guess because they're like the three primary colors, so, you know, you, like, you, they're most recognizable. Snake, can you hear me? It's Naomi. Naomi? What the hell? Campbell and the others are busy right now. I'm on a different codec. Naomi, is what the colonel says true? Yes, but not everything I said was a lie. Who are you? I don't know myself. I don't know my real name or even what my parents looked like. I bought all my identification, but my reason for getting into genetics was true. Because you want to know yourself, right? That's right. I want to know where I came from, my, my age, my race, anything. Naomi. I, I was found in Rhodesia sometime in the 80s, a dirty little orphan. Rhodesia? What's now known as Zimbabwe? Yes. Rhodesia was owned by England until 1965, and there were lots of Indian laborers around. That's probably where I got my skin color from, but I'm not even sure about that. Naomi, you're too worried about the past. Isn't it enough to understand who you are now? Understand who I am now? Why should I? No one else tries to understand me. I was alone for so long. Until I met my big brother. And him. Your big brother? Yes. Frank Yeager. What? He was a young soldier. When he picked me up near the Zambezi River. I was half dead from starvation, and he shared his rations with me. Yes. Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Gray Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. He protected me. He's my one connection. The only connection I have to my past. And he brought you back to America? No. I was in Mozambique when he came. Who is he? You mean Big Boss? Yes. He brought us to this land of freedom. This America. And then he and my brother went back to Africa to continue the war. And that's when it happened. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge and joined Foxhound. I knew it was my best chance to meet you, and I prayed for the day that I would. So, were your prayers answered? Yes. I waited two long years. To kill me? Is that all you cared about? Yes. 
That's right. Two years. You were all I thought about for two long years. Like some kind of twisted obsession. You still hate me? Not exactly. I was partly wrong about you. What about Liquid and the others? <laughs> I'll have my revenge on them, too. Naomi, you didn't kill that doctor, too, did you? The one that used Gray Fox for his genome experiments? Dr. Clark? No. That was my brother. Afterwards, I covered it up and helped him hide out. So that ninja... I mean, Gray Fox... He's come here to kill me? I don't think so. I think he just came here to fight you. I wasn't sure before, but now I think I understand. A final battle with you. That's all he lives for. I'm sure of it. Fox, no. Naomi, tell me something. About Fox Dye? Fox Dye is a type of retrovirus that targets and kills only specific people. First, it infects the macrophages in the victim's body. Fox dye contains smart enzymes created through protein engineering. They're programmed to respond to specific genetic patterns in the cells. Those enzymes recognize the target's DNA? Right. They respond by becoming active and using the macrophages they begin creating TNF Epsilon. Huh? It's a type of cytokine, a peptide which causes cells to die. The TNF Epsilon is carried along the bloodstream to the heart, where they attach to the TNF receptors in the heart cells. And then... they cause a heart attack? The heart cells suffer a shock and undergo an extreme apoptosis. Then... the victim dies. Apoptosis? You mean the heart cells commit suicide? Naomi... What? You must have programmed that thing to kill me too, right? Do I still have time? Naomi, I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. Listen, Snake. I'm not the one who made the decision to use Fox Dye. Huh? You weren't? No. You were injected with Fox Dye as a part of this operation. I just wanted to let you know that. No, that's not the whole truth. Huh? The real thing I wanted to tell you was... Snake, I... I... Hey, what are you doing? <gasps> ah! Snake! <gasps> Naomi! Snake, I can't allow Naomi to make any more unauthorized transmissions. What? Naomi's been removed from this operation. What happened to Naomi? What did she mean when she said that Fox Dye was a part of this operation? Colonel, let me talk to her. I won't. She's under arrest. Colonel, you double-crossed me. Snake, there's no time for that. Right now, your job is to stop Metal Gear. Okay, Snake? Dude, it looks like tensions are rising. Whatever. We are, like, almost here, I think. Well, we should probably be quick coming through here because um, the Palky can get cold again, which means we have to go all the way back up, and yeah, it stinks. Actually, wait, now that I think about it, um, how long are the other episodes of this? Is this, like, the first episode that I actually pass an hour? Because that would be really cool if it was. But I swear, like, if, if not for this small section here, where you, like, well, this last backtracking section here, where you actually have to, um, where you actually have to, like, walk, what, what am I saying? What am I saying? <laughs> if, if it wasn't for this last, um, section here, where, where you have to, like, backtrack, um, throughout the last of, um, the last of the game here, this video would probably be like not not that long to be fair that would be like it ended at like 40 or 50 minutes uh but whatever i'm already like way past that uh but yeah 
Yeah, so I guess I'll just keep playing until we get to the thing in like just a minute or two. I don't think I'll gonna call this anymore, but yeah. Whatever, let me know what you guys think of me using how I am with the capture card here. I know that there's like black bars and the screen is much smaller, but personally, like, I, I think it's fine. Like, whenever I play PS3 games using this um, during testing, you know, it looked fine. The same thing for PS4 games. I think because this is a PS1 classic and the screen's like, you know, on the PlayStation itself, on the monitor itself, it's already shrunken slightly. Yeah, I guess I guess it makes sense. Uh, whatever though. I'll end it here. Next time on Metal Gear Solid One, we're going to enter the final panel key and fight the final boss. Under arrest. What the hell is happening over there? What's the Colonel thinking? Campbell is. I'm sorry, I can't say anymore. But please believe me, I'm here to help you until the end. Anyways, next time on... Well, actually, no, I, already, I kind of said that, didn't I? Good God, my mind... My head, I'm having my head hurts. My mind is a mess. Please, Nick, don't give up. But I will see all of you next time.